There are currently over 90 commercial nuclear reactors in the United States at 61 different sites. These nuclear reactors have been operating for many years. They've generated a good deal of spent nuclear fuel, and then it's stored in cooling pools for the first several years after being removed from the reactor, and then it's moved to dry storage. At this point, there are over 80,000 tons of spent nuclear fuel. Some of these canisters will be used for a much longer period than they had originally been licensed for, so a concern has been raised about potential corrosion of these canisters. We are evaluating potential corrosion of the canisters, along with uh, other programs instituted by the NRC and industry. There are two facets of the work that we do here at Sandia. We evaluate both the environment on the canister surface, and then we do corrosion studies to gain a holistic view of the potential for stress corrosion cracking. There are two standard storage system designs, a vertical design and a horizontal design. In both cases, passive ventilation occurs with air passing through the overpacks and cooling the canisters. Dust is deposited on the canister surfaces during that process. In order to better understand the environment that forms by deliquescence of salts in that dust, Sandia conducts research and development in geochemical modeling of brine compositions and the stability of heated brines on the canister surface, and they characterize dust and salt samples that are collected from actual in-service spent nuclear fuel dry storage canisters at reactor sites. So most forms of corrosion, including general corrosion, hitting corrosion, and crevice corrosion, cannot damage the storage canisters in the anticipated storage lifetimes. However, one corrosion mechanism, fluoride-induced stress corrosion cracking, under specific conditions can act relatively rapidly and lead to canister penetration during long-term storage. So first, the material must be susceptible to stress corrosion cracking. Second, there must be a sufficient tensile stress present, for example, in the welds on the canister. And third, there must be a corrosive environment, for example, a chloride brine on the surface. Sandia performs stress corrosion cracking research and development because of the increasing need to ensure design quality and fidelity of spent nuclear fuel dry storage canisters. Robust research leads to enhanced predictions of where and when stress corrosion cracking may occur. In addition to aiding in the prediction of stress corrosion cracks, Sandia evaluates enhanced mitigation and repair techniques that may reduce concerns associated with stress corrosion cracks in the future. Sandia combines this with corrosion studies to validate cracking models. We apply both electrochemical testing and large-scale atmospheric exposures to compare and validate maximum pin size models. We study U-bend exposures under various atmospheric conditions to explore influences of material and environment on the pit to crack transition. We measure crack growth rates on canister materials under relevant environment conditions to determine crack growth rate dependencies on material and environment. The combination of the environmental characterization and corrosion studies helps us to better understand and predict the occurrence of potential stress corrosion cracking, informing both maintenance and operation strategies as well as potential mitigation and repair options. Sandia's research and development combines both the geographic spatial location and the canister surface location to develop a better understanding of the potential occurrence and timing for stress corrosion cracking.